Polar Masters K-Smart World Series is where you will find the most custom computers on the planet. Head to mod.coolermaster.com for more details. Be there! This is a sad day. Recently on Tech Talk, I said that in the 11 years I've been doing water cooling, I've never had a leak. Well, you know, my policy is no one's ever done anything until they do it. And Skunk Works has a leak. All right, there's Skunk Works in all her glory. Do you see how that right reservoir right there is a little bit lower than the left? Do you see how the levels are a little bit below the cap? Well, I have filled that reservoir up uh, about an inch worth over the last couple of weeks. And I just assumed that the fluid was evaporating or still bleeding because these 45 mil thick radiators, especially when they're set up uh, vertically like this radiator is, was just bleeding or still evaporating slightly because you do lose some coolant through evaporation even in hard line and through soft tubing. But that's not the case. But as you can see, there's the proof in the pudding right there. So I had suspected that this one of these fittings under here, one of these 90s was leaking. So last night I uh, cleaned it up and there was a drip in there but I had a lot of tension pushed on this uh, this tube right here. I had a lot of tension pushed on that when I had my old cables in there so I thought that maybe it was just kind of binding on that, that 90 degrees so I cleaned it up and it didn't seem to be dripping or anything so last night before I did my live stream I put that in there to see if it was dripping and as you can see it certainly is. There's even a little bit on the radiator right there that, that you can see. Let's see if I can get it to drip right now. No, not dripping, but I was doing that and I was able to get some drips to come out. So, yeah, we're going to be replacing that guy right there. The only unfortunate thing is the way that this system is set up is it connects to this end right here. And that just happens to be the hardest tube to bleed in this entire system. So, uh, that's all right. We enjoy this kind of stuff or we wouldn't do it, right? That's why we water cool. We enjoy this stuff. Even the, even the failures. Now the way my drain system works, which probably freaks a lot of people out, is I just have a T-splitter coming off the pump with a little bit of extra hose and a fill port on there that has a plug, which I simply pull the plug off and let it drip down into the bowl. And then when I loosen up the fitting on the top of the reservoir, then it will just come running out. So there's a little bit of splashage but I've got about $75 worth of nano fluid in this system, so I'm not about to lose it. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to drain this, this bad boy now. That's just cracked open. There comes the rest of the fluid. Skunkworks is taking a pee. Hashtag Skunkworks pees. All right, we got it all bled. I got the fitting off. Put a cup there in case it drips, as you can see it is dripping. And there's the uh, there's the bad fitting. You can see we even have a little bit of staining on there. So we're gonna get that, that uh, elbow out of there. And I'm actually gonna be putting on a uh, kind of a, nine, not a, a sharp 90 like that, but sort of a, a, like that black one on the left right there where it's um, dual rotary fitting. Although it's gonna be a chrome one, like the one in the middle, because I don't have any black ones, believe it or not. 
yeah, water cooling part I don't have. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna unthread this guy. And we'll take a look at it here and do it all one-handed. One-handed unthreading blurry video. There we go. Yeah, as you can see, it's, uh, I don't wanna touch my camera now with the yellow fingers. There it is. What fitting is this, you might be asking? Well, this is an EK fitting. Basically, it's like a non-branded uh, bits power fitting, I believe. They feel just the same. So the leak actually happened, uh, focus. So the leak, so the leak actually happened right there in the rotary part. And how does that happen? Well, I mean, really, the part doesn't move or anything, so I don't know. It just eventually fluid worked its way into the O-ring, <clears throat> and once a leak forms, well, then it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So let me, let me show you how much play is in there now. Okay, so here's the rotary fitting. It turns right there. That way you can rotate the fitting. That's why it's called a rotary. And these parts are held together nothing more than uh, by the pressure fit of an O-ring and a groove in there. So it feels fine right now, but if you look, there is there's quite a bit of play in that. Now that play was there when I installed it on all of them, but it's not unnormal for there to be play in a fitting. In fact, just about every fitting I've ever installed or ever used has had play in it. Bits Power seems to have the least amount of play, but also the least amount of rotation because it's extremely stiff. But even Bits Power have been prone to leak in those joints. So all we gotta do is replace this fitting, refill and bleed, and we'll be up and running in no time. So this is what we're gonna be putting in there. And you'll notice that this out also has a little bit of play, but I've been using, but this one actually is a lot tighter when you turn it. And I've been using these dual rotary fittings from Alpha Cool for a while now. But the reality here is any fitting that you use is a potential failure point. And we'll talk more about water cooling at the end of this video. It'll probably spark a pretty good discussion. And there's a new fitting installed. All that's left to do now is fill it and bleed it, which really would take longer than the replacement of this fitting itself. It's just because Skunk Works is a little bit complicated down here in the basement area, it can, uh, it takes a lot longer than this was just a regular old water cooled soft tube build. Oh well, it's all part of the enthusiasm or enthusiast water cooling lifestyle, I guess. All right, well, the system is running. As you can see right there, it's bleeding. And we're gonna be checking for leaks over here on this side. And so far we're looking okay. We're gonna let this run for a while and we'll see uh, how this goes. This is the leak test part that you should always perform. And uh, it's no different when changing one fitting. You gotta check the entire system again. So that's definitely not something I had planned to do this morning, uh, but regardless, it needed to be done. So we're gonna let that leak test run for a while. Uh, the wife and I, actually, we have to go to uh, the doctors because my two-month-old, unfortunately, has to have a, an outpatient surgery. Nothing major, but still, don't ever like having to, you know, hear that your your child needs a procedure or anything done. So we're gonna go deal with that, uh, which is obviously more important than this computer. And then when we get back, we'll check and see how we're doing, see if we leaked, uh, let it bleed, and then we'll be back up and running. So we'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay, we're back, and baby Jay had her surgery. Everything went well, so thank you guys for the wishes, the well wishes on Twitter. Uh, but back to the system now, see if she's going well. As you can see, the new fitting is right there. And we're still dry. So, what we're doing now is we've been letting it bleed now for like the last four hours or something. You can see it there, it's uh, letting it get the air out. We're gonna go ahead and top that off, close her up, and it's pretty much done at this point. Now let's go ahead and just button it up and then let's talk about what happened and uh, whether or not this is the kind of thing you should be afraid of. Yeah, I could have hidden this video. I could have just not put it up, not put it public that I had a, fa a failure in a fitting. I mean, I could have maintained my reputation of I've never had a system leak in 11 years, but then again, nothing's ever happened until it's happened. So I think one system leak in 11 years is not bad. And this one was 
not catastrophic, obviously, because the leak wasn't up there in the system. It was down in the bottom where there was no electronics anywhere near it. In fact, if you saw the pictures on Instagram or Twitter, and you should be following, by the way, because you get a lot of behind the scenes stuff up there, uh, you would see it just fell down into the case floor and just pooled up there and didn't go anywhere. So there was nothing for it to damage. However, if it had been a rotary fitting up at the top, it could have been a lot more catastrophic and a lot more costly. Now let's go ahead and talk about what happened here, whether or not you should still do water cooling and all that. So this is what was at fault. And I already showed you guys that. This is my, this is an EK 90 degree rotary fitting here. Um, I can't hold this against EK. It doesn't matter what brand it is. I couldn't hold it against it because there are failures. Things do happen. In fact, uh, I, I still can't find anything wrong with this. If I, if I blow in this thing, I still can't get any air to go through the O-ring, watch. So it holds air. And believe it or not, I use air to do a lot of my leak testing as well. If I put a system together, I'll, I'll blow in it really hard. And I'm opening myself up to a lot of jokes here, I know. But if it can hold air, then likelihood of it holding fluid is good. So my first test is always the air pressure test, and then I'll put in fluid and do my leak test. So this thing is still right now not leaking. Now it's possible because I had this thing torqued with cables against it when I had all the extra cables prior to doing the custom sleeve kit, and I had them shoved in there, that it was torquing against this to where fluid was able to make it past the O-ring. And once fluid makes it past it, then it's got a pathway that doesn't seal up again until it's dried out and has a chance to seal. So this fitting could still very well be good. And in fact, I'll test it. But the point is, the more of these things that you add to your system, the more fittings, the more elbows, uh, anything you add, more parts, is going to add more points of failure. So if you're building a system and you're worried about leaking and stuff, just know that if you go with soft tubing, compression fittings, and do as much as you can do to keep from using elbows and rotary adapters like this, the chances of leaking are very, very slim. But it does and can happen, so you want to keep that in mind as well. But as you can see, the system is up and running and holding fluid. Pretty sure. I mean, I had to do a leak test for about five hours, so... Uh, but anyway, yeah, this is the problem there. Now, Jay, are you worried about water cooling now in the future? Absolutely not. I always knew this was a risk. In fact, because I knew this was a risk and never forgot that over the last 11 years is why I was able to catch it early before it turned into a major failure where all of the fluid leaked out the bottom and then we would have had a problem, especially if I wasn't home. Now it wasn't leaking when the system was off, it was only on, uh, leaking when the system was on and built up pressure inside the system and leaked even more when the system got hot and was doing, you know, overclocking uh, graphics cards and gaming because that was a graphics card loop that was leaking. The CPU loop was independent. That was completely unaffected by this. But I do have about six more of these fittings in the system, so there's the potential for it happening again. But of course, the important part here is to always monitor your fluid levels. That's why I do nice giant reservoirs like this that are very easily, uh, easily visible, because that's your first indicator that something is, is happening here. And I happen to notice, you know, that fluid's going down a few millimeters a day. That's a problem. So that's why I caught it while it was a drip before it was, you know, Niagara Falls. So guys, this is a risk you take when you do water cooling. It's not going to change it. I'm, everything I do is still going to be water cooled. And if that's not the kind of risk you want to take, then water cooling is not for you. But if you are willing to take the risk and just know that I've had one bad fitting in 11 years, it's pretty good odds, then by all means, take all the precautions necessary water cool away and have a good time. So guys, you guys have been wanting a lot more water cooling videos from me. I am proud to report that, I, or pleased to report, I shouldn't say proud, proud is a sin. Uh, I have about three giant boxes full of water cooling gear from EK, Primo Chill, Alpha Cool. Um, I think that's it, but a lot of different stuff. Plus I have three custom water cooled systems with acrylic builds to do. Case mods on Skunk Works are going to happen in the near future because, you know, the PDX LAN really sort of uh, made me wish I had a modded PC. But anyway, so we're going to be doing that. We're also going to be doing more how-tos, a completely revamped beginner's guide to water cooling, getting all the people ready for summer who are going to be doing their first water cooling builds. And we are also going to be doing uh, more acrylic. We're actually going to do our first full tutorial of how to bend acrylic tubing. 
so or PETG tubing. And I'll explain why you want PETG over acrylic too, which is kind of a, a question that a lot of people have. So there you go, guys. Just went ahead and put this out there in public. Opening myself up to ridicule and pointing and laughing with people saying, ha ha, your system leaked. Well, ha ha, nothing broke, bro. All right, see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.